still the 28th day of October, still on Why in the Morning, still the hottest breakfast show around. My name is Joe Valentine, or at Color Miva on everything. And you can find us at Y254 on Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter. Hashtag is Why in the Morning. It's a good Monday. There's nothing blue about this Monday. But that should be the only blue thing. Aman Amnagani, my friend, we are entering like this, the health segment, and we want to talk to you about things that are important to youth. Yes, I, I think it's important. You turn to a youth channel, you expect to see something that will benefit. And we strive to do just that. So, Lush Nongele have fibroids, and we're going to try and keep it along the age bracket of the youth. So, Jaribu Apo 19 Apo Kienda to send sana, to send sana. Again, you know where to find us. The thing is over there. Or you could use our text line 20154. Start with Y254. That is 20154. Start with Y254. Now help me give a warm welcome to my guest. Good morning. Morning. How are you? I'm well. You look fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. What's your name? My name is Dr. Christina mm -hmm. Sule. Mm -hmm. I'm an obstetrician and gynecologist. Okay. That's not a hard job. Was it, it a is. pretty girl? Mm -hmm. It is a hard job. Yeah. <laughs> you manage it well, I can Thank see. You. So talk to us about fibroids. What are fibroids? So fibroids are basically non-cancerous growths mm -hmm. that happen inside the uterus. They're not cancerous, but um, they do cause a bit of uh, anxiety, a bit of distress to the patient who actually has them. Um, and they grow mostly inside the muscle of the uterus. Mm -hmm. I have two stories to tell you. First, mm -hmm. I, I hope she doesn't mind me sharing, but my mom had fibroids at one point. And her fibroids, I don't know if it was the size, I'm aware they were, I'm a something, but they kind of made her look like she was expecting. So some people got confused for a while. And they'd uh, follow up with the question, oh, how is the baby, <laughs> And no, there was no baby, but guys. And then there's also um, this person, this public figure I follow on Instagram, her name is Ore, she's a model. and she also got vibrates. Now, when my mom got it, in my head, it was an age thing. Like, as a woman, you just develop things. But for her, it hit, hit me a bit close to home because she didn't know what it was. And she was trying to lose weight, but it was not going away. And she was really bummed out. So tell me, is it an age thing? Is it a lifestyle kind of situation? If I eat this, I'll get fibroids. If I don't, what's happening here? So basically, okay, specifically with the case of your mom, mm -hmm. what happens is that fibroids, especially when there's many of them, they cause the uterus to enlarge and to become really big. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, pregnancy also causes the uterus to enlarge and become really big. <laughs> and that's why sometimes people can confuse it for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But yes, abdominal distension is one of the symptoms of uh, very large fibroids. Um, unfortunately, unless the fibroids are removed, there's nothing much that you can do about that kind of distension. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not an age issue. Mm -hmm. Actually, what causes fibroids is not really known. Mm -hmm. However, it has been said that African women tend to develop fibroids more than mm -hmm. Caucasian women. And um, African women tend to develop fibroids younger and mm -hmm. their fibroids grow faster than that of Caucasian women. Oh, Ideally, the bracket is 30 to 40, but we're seeing fibroids in much younger and younger and younger ladies mm -hmm. than, than was previously detected. What's happening? Why the change? So, um, as I said before, the cause is not known. Mm -hmm. However, some people have stipulated that obesity is one of the causes of fibroids. Mm -hmm. Some people have said that alcohol consumption is one of the, uh, one of the causes. Mm -hmm. um, another cause is actually not having had children before, mm -hmm. although that doesn't mean that if you've had children that you cannot have fibroids, you can still have fibroids. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, of course, there are very many things that are kind of related to that, but yes, women who are more obese and women who consume alcohol and women also who start their periods much earlier than the rest are more predisposed to getting fibroids than the rest. Oh, wow. There is also a hereditary aspect to it, meaning that if your mother or sister or aunt had fibroids, you're likely to get <laughs> fibroids as mm -hmm. well, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But yes, there is a hereditary aspect to it. Oh, wow. That, that's, I did not know that. That's a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. Is it something you can prevent? Unfortunately, no, it's not something you can prevent. However, you can prevent things like obesity mm -hmm. and alcohol consumption. Mm -hmm. But the other factors like the hereditary factors or, you know, not having a child is sometimes not very much within your control. Mm -hmm. But yes, uh, diet, um, alcohol, obesity, that is within your control. But 
um, preventing obesity and reducing alcohol consumption or stopping alcohol consumption is one of the things that helps with more or less any disease. It's mm. not limited to fibroids alone. Which is true, but we are in Kenya and form ni party after party. That's, a, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so I don't know what we are going to do, guys. I think it will be little to make cut to, yeah. <laughs> so how do I know that it's... <coughs> Um, let's say I'm a random person in the audience. How do I know if I have a fibroid? How, what are the symptoms? Like, what's, how do I expect? How do I read my own body? Okay, so fibroids do come with a number of symptoms. Uh, one of them is changes in your menstrual pattern. So one of the things you might have is heavy bleeding. Sometimes you can have bleeding in between your menstrual periods. Uh, you might have uh, a bit of pain or a considerable amount of pain during your periods although there are other conditions that do cause menstrual pain yeah. as well. Eh, okay, aside from conditions, and, and, but there's, what happens if there's normal you know, mens menstrual pain? How mm -hmm. do you now tell the difference? Okay. If pain so, okay. Ideally, you should not have mm -hmm. too much menstrual pain. It should be something that's bearable, something that you don't necessarily have to take medication for. So if you have to take medication for your menstrual pain or if it's very severe, if you're unable to go to school or unable to go to work, then that is considered as you know, considerable menstrual pain. Mm -hmm. And that could be because of other reasons, but one of the reasons is actually uterine fibroids. Wow. So your menstrual pattern can change. You might have heavy periods um, or you might have lower back pain mm -hmm. or lower abdominal pain. And then in other women, they have symptoms such as infertility. They're not able to get a baby, oh. and one of the reasons is because of fibroids. I'm, I'm hoping like it's, there's a situation where if you take them out, the infertility goes away. Yes, there is such a situation. Uh -huh. uh, not for everyone, but yes, there is such a situation where the fibroids are taken out and the fertility actually returns. But that depends on where the fibroids are placed, because there are different places where the fibroids can be that affect fertility, and then there are other places where the fibroids are that don't affect fertility. Those other places could affect bleeding or could affect other symptoms such as urination or passing of stool. Where are those places? Like where, where can they attach themselves? It's a little freaky. You know? Okay. So the fibroid itself is inside the uterus. Mm -hmm. um, it could be in the muscle layer of the uterus, which is kind of just within the uterus, or it could um, protrude into the cavity of the uterus, or it could be attached to the outer part of the uterus. So when there are many fibroids within the muscle layer of the uterus, it makes the uterus very heavy and the uterus tends to lie on sometimes on some of the organs. Sometimes it can lie on the bladder, sometimes it can move backwards and lie on the rectum, sometimes it can lie on one of the ureters. And you know the ureters conduct urine from the kidney to the bladder. So when it lies on one of the uterus, it, one of the ureters, it causes an obstruction mm -hmm. in that place. Sometimes if it moves backwards, it can cause an obstruction or a bit of um, difficulty in passage of stool because it's lying on the rectum. Sometimes it can lie on the blood and you have patients who have difficulty in passing urine. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can have a fibroid that's just literally attached to the outer surface of the uterus. Um, yes, it can still cause these pressure symptoms that we call, but sometimes it can actually twist upon itself. So abdominal pain is one of the symptoms ah, of uterine fibroids. Twist, it's, Because it's like on a little stem ooh. attached to the uterus, so that stem can actually ooh. twist. But the ones that actually cause the most symptoms are the ones that protrude into the cavity of the uterus. Mm -hmm. Those ones cause difficulty in conception mm -hmm. because the developing baby literally has no place to implant mm -hmm. and at the same time they cause issues with bleeding because they infringe upon the lining of the uterus, which is called the endometrium which is what gets secreted every month as your period. Okay, at least that much I remember in biology. To okay. quote <laughs> shade, shade up on any, I love how it just crumbles, crumbles exactly. on the wall when it's time for it. <laughs> Thank you, my yes. biology teacher, for <laughs> your contribution to society. Yes. The way I'm hearing it, it might, you can actually <laughs> confuse it for pregnancy. You can confuse it for pregnancy because it causes abdominal distension, yeah, it back causes pain. abnormal bleeding, back pain. Um, yes, so sometimes. So your bladder. Yes, early, early in pregnancy you do get such symptoms, mm -hmm. but the symptoms are actually very distinct. You get heavy menstrual periods, mm -hmm. you get bleeding in between periods, you get back pain, you get uh, difficulty in urination, difficulty in passing stool, infertility, and some women even tend to get recurrent miscarriages. Because Aww. if the fibroid is seated inside the uterus, then you can imagine that implantation cannot occur. But when implantation does occur, the fibroid has occupied a certain amount of space. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of just pushes the pregnancy out. Ooh. Yeah.
work that's being territorial in all the wrong exactly, ways. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so assuming I am patient and then I've just found out, okay, I have fibroids. What am I expecting as on my road to recovery? How are we going to deal with this now? Okay, so fibroids can sometimes be an incidental finding. You might just go in for an ultrasound for something completely different. Maybe you just got pregnant or maybe you've had other issues and then now you go in and do an ultrasound and they find fibroids. So ideally, if your fibroids are not causing you symptoms, that is, if you're not getting any pain, you're not getting any abnormal menstrual bleeding, you're not having difficulty in conception, most of the time, your gynecologist should not interfere with those fibroids if they're not causing any symptoms. Or if you found out that you have fibroids and maybe you're just about to become menopausal, mm -hmm. then there's no need to sort that out. However, if you do have symptoms then the fibroids need to be dealt with depending on what you're trying to achieve so there are those women who are just trying to make the bleeding get better because the bleeding is very heavy mm -hmm. there are those women who want to get pregnant there are those women who just want that pain to go away there are those women who do not want that kind of distension because it's causing issues with their bladder their rectum so how we deal with them depends on what you're trying to achieve um, mainly they're dealt with by surgery mm -hmm. so mainly you have to get them removed but that is if you're young if you're looking to get pregnant or if it's causing significant symptoms mm -hmm. for those women who are maybe older um, one of the options is just to remove the uterus entirely and Ooh. that is called a hysterectomy the whole thing yes uh -huh. but that is for those who've already had their babies mm -hmm. who are maybe close to becoming menopausal and whom the fibroids are causing significant symptoms and you know they feel like maybe it'll be too many years before they become menopausal they don't want to suffer through all those symptoms Aww. but for the younger ladies especially like the 20 to 30 year olds who maybe want to get pregnant and you find this fibroid is sitting inside the cavity of the uterus then those fibroids need to be removed or maybe this fibroid is blocking one of the fallopian tubes so she's unable to get pregnant mm. then this fibroid definitely needs to be surgically removed mm. yeah so most of the time when you're diagnosed with fibroids um, if they are symptomatic, it is likely that you will be having some form of surgery, although there are other ways to treat fibroids as well. Mm -hmm. and, and say it's, it's, I want to say benign, it's, it's not cancerous, but no, it's, it's, not. it's not giving you symptoms, you're not feeling any pain, and you know, you decide to just let it chill. It won't grow? And Actually, fibroids do grow, they increase in size, and one of the things that makes them grow is estrogen. So fibroids, <laughs> but my body makes it eh? exactly. <laughs> it's so unfortunate, but yes, that's how they grow. Uh -huh. They do. They are predisposed to estrogen mm -hmm. in preference to progesterone. Mm -hmm. So that means that when you become menopausal, it's likely that your fibroids can shrink mm -hmm. or disappear or stop causing you symptoms. But when you're younger and you have lots of estrogen, your fibroids can grow. Mm. They can increase in number. Mm -mm. And then there are those women who get pregnant when they have a fibroid. During pregnancy, you produce a lot of estrogen and the fibroids can grow during pregnancy. Oh. For some women, they stay the same, but for some women, they do increase in size. Okay, so this estrogen tip is, is kind of making me feel like guys can't get fibroids. Because no, I mean, they, they don't have a yeah, uterus then anyway. they have uh, what's this other one? T testosterone. Yes, they one. have testosterone. Yeah. Oh no, messi me pone abo. Okay, nisa, it's okay. I tried to follow Facebook. I tried to follow channel on Twitter. Hashtag is why in the morning we're discussing fibroids, how to manage them, you know what to do in case you just heard you have fibroids, and do not panic. You're your number one, Cindy. Yeah. So what happens if, again, we live in a country where the, hmm, I I, I want to say economic situation is a bit iffy and either you're, you're extremely well off or you are below the poverty line. So what happens if I live below the poverty line and I find out I have fibroids? How, how do I get assistance? Okay, so um, there are certain medications that can help your fibroids. Mm -hmm. um, however, those medications, they're called GN GNRH agonists. Mm -hmm. Those medications are reserved for people who are going to have surgery. So basically what the medication does, it helps your fibroid to shrink. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we give them is because mm -hmm. um, when we do the surgery, we want there to be minimal bleeding. So that's the reason why we give the, this particular kind of medication. Mm -hmm. This medication does not actually cure the fibroid. And when the medication is stopped, the fibroid regrows. So uh, basically, if you're living below the poverty line and you have fibroids, 
Um, one of my suggestions would be to visit a government facility. There are very many government facilities with very qualified doctors who are able to remove the fibroids, especially if it's very symptomatic. Because uh, one of the things I forgot to mention is that when fibroids cause a lot of bleeding, they cause anemia. Whoa. Yeah, anemia is, you know, <gasps> basically a deficit in your hemoglobin, so in your, the, the blood that you have. And so that can cause a lot of symptoms. It can cause lethargy, tiredness, dizziness. So you're not able to function. So below the poverty line, you need to work. You need to be able to sustain yourself. Maze. And then this anemia comes in and the bleeding is there. And that's aside from all the other issues that are, that are happening. Mm. But government facilities are actually very qualified in doing the surgery to remove fibroids, which is called myomectomy. Um, so I feel like that is one of the ways in which a woman who has fibroids who maybe cannot afford to be in a high-end facility can be able to still help herself. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I can see someone has just joined our health class. We have just discussed this, but I can ask her again for, on you, your behalf. So they asked about ladies who have enlarged uterus, mistaken for pregnancies, and how to handle it. So previously we said that fibroids actually can grow to, to a size that makes you look like you're expecting. Yeah, but you're not. Mm -hmm. So how do you deal with the stigma? First of all, congratulations on Shangasa Saniba and what is the problem? How how do you deal first with the stigma and maybe if you can you choose to not remove and they look that big, isn't it? Yes, you can choose not to remove. Of course all patients have their choice. There mm -hmm. are many women who say I don't want them removed. There are many women who say I do not want a hysterectomy, even though I'm done having my children. I don't want any organ removed from my body. So yes, of course, it is a patient choice. Mm -hmm. um, stigma is one of those things that's really hard to deal with. It's already hard being female. Exactly. Mm. So, like for example, when women come after having a baby, you mm -hmm. know, and you're trying to, you know, get yourself back Snap into back. shape. Mm. Yes. Do you have and kids? I do. <laughs> you don't look it. Oh I my gosh. Do. Okay. Uh -huh. I have a daughter. Uh -huh. So yeah. So when you're trying to get yourself back into shape, it can be quite difficult. And already, and one of the things that women really complain about is the distended abdomen. Mm -hmm. So um, with fibroids, that's the same thing, especially if they're very large. The stigma is there. I think mainly um, family support, social support, because you know at the same time you don't want to go around telling people, no, I'm not pregnant. It's I just exhausting. Have yeah. <laughs> so, but mm. I think lots of support um, can make a woman feel, you know, confident because you know you have this condition. As you make, as you take your time to make the decision as to whether you truly think they need to be removed or whether you just kind of want to stay because maybe you're close to menopause or maybe um, you just do not want your body interfered with. That is also a choice that patients have. Mm -hmm. However, um, it needs to be known that when your fibroids are that big to the point that other people can notice the distension, really something needs to be done about it. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because, remember I mentioned that when the uterus gets very large, it can press on the ureters. When the urine gets stagnant, it can cause kidney failure. So that's one of the things. The other thing is that when the uterus gets very large, it can press on one of the blood vessels that goes to your leg and cause you to get a clot. Now when this blood clot dislodges, it can be fatal. Mm -hmm. So when your uterus is that large that it's causing significant distension that other people are noticing, you're uncomfortable, your gynecologist can see, mm -hmm. really you need to do something about it because it could cause other problems. So it's not something that you should live with and say, okay, let me see how the stigma goes. <laughs> it's something that you need to sort out. Mm -hmm. Whoa, okay. So basically, once you've started your periods, you're, you're at risk. Yes, and especially the girls who start their periods a little bit earlier, um, it's been proposed that they, they are at risk of getting fibroids. Oh, we're going to a meeting after this. Hey, okay. <laughs> it's a, a, it's breathtaking to imagine how some conditions can affect your they whole can. manner in being, the way you think, the, the way you feel like you should function. Way it's, it's amazing. Maybe you can conclude. What would you like to? What would you like the youth to understand or know? So I'd like the youth to know that when you do have menstrual symptoms, for example, yeah, when your periods are too heavy, when your periods are too painful, when you're getting too much pain in your back, too much pain in your abdomen you need to see your gynecologist. It may not be fibroids, but it may be, and it may be something that you may be struggling with, you see? Mm. And it's better to speak out. If you're young and you're trying to conceive a baby, 
and you don't really know what the issue is. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, family can be a bit difficult when you're trying to conceive and even friends mm. and everyone is wondering why aren't you getting pregnant, maybe you're newlywed. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that you need to sort out, especially any kind of gynecological symptoms. See your gynecologist, explain it to them. It's better to be reassured and told, you know, there's nothing wrong mm -hmm. than to be told, oh, you know, you have fibroids and, you know, they've caused this kind of effects and now this kind of surgery needs to be done. So I'd say, mm -hmm. listen to your body, visit your gynecologist, let them know whatever you feel is abnormal gynecologically. Would, would they hurt if, if someone with fibroids would have coitus? Would that affect them in any way? Okay, it depends on where the fibroids are. Um, it's I a possibility? To, it is a possibility. Way, you way. could have pain during sexual intercourse, yes. Some fibroids are in the cervix even. Some fibroids are very low in the uterus, so mm -hmm. that can cause pain during sexual activity, yes. It's a rare symptom, but it does happen. Okay. Guys, listen to your body. That's basic uh, cl lesson of the class, sorry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Eh, whoa. Okay. Uh, at white 5 on Facebook, at Y254 channel, on Twitter, hashtag is why the pony. You have been with us on Health Matters and we've been zooming on fibroids. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've taken away a thing or two. And I hear we have a very special something to play for you. All right, check this out.